Welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $5,000 Modern Open. I'm Tandy, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi. Today, we have not only $5,000 on the line, but two slots to the Apex Invitational later this year in November, as well as two slots to the Regional Championship in Atlanta later this year. Uh, a lot on the line for these players. Ross, why don't you give us a rundown of what's been going on in the tournament so far and what we're going to be playing, uh, watching this round. So we got uh, four rounds in the books, three rounds left to go. So we're at the business end of the tournament. We got four 4 0 players that we're going to be watching playing for a spot uh, in the top eight. The 5 0 should be able to double draw safely. Our four 4 0 players are Travis Brown on Hammer, Gabriel Abadi on Yogmoth, Michael Likens on Kragenwick Cremator Reanimator, and Eric Rose also on Yogmoth. So Yogmoth, really the big winner of the day. We mentioned it earlier in the show. It was the surprise of the tournament and how prevalent it was but it is also performing quite well i just did a breakdown of the top 24 players which is everybody who's 2-1-1 or better mm -hmm. uh so far in the tournament and the most represented deck among that 24 yagmoth with five copies wow. uh, so Being out creativity while well, where creativity is the most popular deck yeah, in the room so. creativity is next most there are four players uh playing and all of them at three and one all with great tiebreakers uh, we've also got three Hammer players at X11 or better, two Is It Mark Tides, two Rakdos Scams, two Four Color Omnaths. These were really our most played decks of the tournament. Uh, and then uh, six Singleton decks. We've got that Crag, uh, uh, that Kragenwick Reanimator deck. But there's a Jund deck at 2-1-1, an Affinity deck at 3-1. Uh, the Is It Scam deck that we saw from D'Artagnan Fail, mm -hmm. uh, a Living End deck, and a Rhinos deck. So not as many Cascade decks as we normally see here. Normally very right. popular to play Shardless Agent in these tournaments. Uh, you know, it seems that the metagame has shifted and they are no longer performing as well. All right. Well, uh, seems like the players are just about ready in the feature match area. So let's head on down there and uh, see if they are ready to go. All right, so what's the matchup we're watching this round, Ross? Um, uh, That's... We got Travis Brown and Michael Likens. I knew we had Likens with the Cree Animator deck. I wasn't sure which matchup he got, whether it was Yogg or Hammer. So he got the Hammer matchup, which means we got a Yogg Mirror on the other table between Eric Rose and Gabriel Abadi. But uh, I got to say, if I'm Likens, I would have felt much better getting the Yogg Moth pairing here, playing against the pressure of this hammer deck is uh, you know very scary for any sort of combo strategy all right so we are underway we got valderna procure for lichens we got esther sentinel for brown both players with a potent one drop that is integral to their strategy and we'll see which one takes the day back travis brown's way was on the play here let's see what two drop they have maybe stoneforge maybe pure still paladin I'm not really giving it a think here. You know, this is a matchup that's going to play out very in a very condensed fashion. The first two to three turns are super important. So you want to make sure to take your time, play them correctly, know what your sequences are, plan ahead. Uh, and round going with a very powerful play of Stoneforge Mystic here. All right, let's see what artifact he wants to go get. It's Paradise Mantle. Going to go ahead and play it, maybe. Can't equip it this turn, so maybe he's going to go to hand. We'll see. All right, it's going to go to hand. Okay. And back Lycan's way. Turn two. What you got? Outside of the uh, cookbooks and the uh, the stupid vampire. I can't remember. Are an Epicure? No, the other oh, one. Insulin Neonate. Insulin Neonate. How, how often is are you able to turn to a Goryeo's Vengeance in the set in the deck? It is with just those two cards, right? Yeah. You could also thought tease yourself on turn one. Mm, not with an Emrakul, though. Mm. All right, here's a thought seize from Lycans. Seize a hand with Hammer, Pierce of Paladin, and Paradise Mantle, as well as uh, two planes. Next turn is going to be rather disappointing for Brown as long as Lycan takes the pure still paladin which i assume is what's going to be taken yeah it's a little scary because if your opponent top deck cigar to aid you're dead that's just always uh, the case though not not quite <laughs> not quite dead they're a man they're a man of short still <laughs> all right top looks like another hammer or maybe that was a shadow spear yeah, that was just that was arguably worse all right so we can go paradise mantle equip it doesn't gain us any mana this turn maybe we want to hold it uh, we can attack for one with Ink Moth, but we can't really do equipping to it this turn. I think I'm on Mantle, equip to Stoneforge, make a mana, play Shadow Spear, equip to 
Esper Sentinel and attack. I like it. The Paradise Mantle is uh, mana neutral, which is nice. And then after that turn, it's mana positive once it's equipped. Not one that sees a ton of play. Honestly, most people lean Springleaf Drum instead, but with the free equip ability, it's kind of cool with uh, Pure Steel Paladin. Yeah, and sometimes you get to draw a card off Paladin with it, so that you often see it as, as a singleton. All right, decides not to go for the Paradise Mantle, maybe holding on to it for another turn in case he's able to draw another Pure Steel Paladin. Yeah, gets an extra damage in this way. Against Emrakul, I just like spewing my permanents onto the battlefield, though. Sure. This is exactly six, so right. Emrakul would just wipe the battlefield. Back Lycan's way. Chapter two on the Years of Saga. Probably going to start turning some tokens unless we got a big turn. I think Yargle was the draw. Multani and Yargle, the newest well, monster, 18 so, power. So Gorda's Vengeance with that, plus the Epic here is a lethal attack. Okay, let's see if that's what we got. Uh, given that Lycan's is thinking, I imagine there is no Gorda's Vengeance. Because the blood token is our outlet. And we have a, definitely have a third land. I see Swamp Urborg at the top of the hand there. Goes mm -hmm. to the Urborg. We do have the blood token, so we do have a way to get the Yargle into the graveyard. So yeah. if the Gore's Vengeance is there, this could be lights out. Could just want to take the chance, you know, use a mana, use the blood token, see if you rip it. Well, you still got to put it in the graveyard at that point, right? Yeah, but the Yargle is going to sit there. It's not like an Emrakul. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, good call. All right, so draw for turn from Travis Brown. No play from the yeah. Lycans. I'm just going to activate the Saga. Yeah, I think he's going on a Construct plan here for now. Makes sense. Can go get the cookbook too. Next turn. Travis Brown doesn't. I mean, maybe he drew a pure seal pout and it's, it looked like another white card in hand, but hard to tell. Oh, it is. He That's drew a the baddie. It is a potentially lethal attack coming in through here, especially with Ink Moth Nexus. All right. One mana hammer. Yeah, love going for the hammer first in case there's a, a fatal push. You don't need the extra card. Okay. Let's go for the pure steel. Now we equip to the Esper Sentinel. All right. Flip resolves. We'll play Paradise Mantle and draw yeah. a card. Let's see if we can rip another hammer. Okay. And now we can equip this to Stoneforge for a free mana that lets us activate Ink Moth. And then we can move all the equips to the Inglemoth and force a chump block with the Urza Saga. It's not quite lethal, but it's enough to make them block with the token for no value. Oh no, we, yeah, we can move the mantle over. Now we can move Shadow Spear and Hammer over, and then we can use the mantle Esper Sentinel to re give it flying. Oh, that's so sick. Paradise Mantle's ripping here. There we go. Found All it. All right. So it loses flying, but then you animate it again, and it regains flying, and then the Saga can no longer block. Travis Brown finds Pure Steel Paladin, finds the kill from seemingly out of nowhere. Does Lycans have an answer? Unlikely, considering he probably would have killed something in response yeah. to all these stuffs moving around. And here we see a situation where Paradise Mantle was much better than Springleaf. And that it had two mana this turn. All right. We're going to discard the Yargle. If we draw the Gorias, we're going to be big sad. Didn't. We're going to move on to game number two. Lycans losing game number one to Travis Brown's nice top deck on the Pierce to Paladin. Yeah, and very well played. That, that is a very tricky sequence to find. Had to use every part of the Buffalo to uh, get there. So Brown doing impressive stuff with a deck that we know he is very well practiced with. All right, so since Lycan is going to be on the play for game number two with that Kraken White Cremator deck, Ross, why don't you take a look at their sideboard and give us your expert analysis on okay. how they're going to be sideboarding. So we've got one Pithy Needle, one Pirate Spell Bomb, two Nile Spell Bomb, one Haywire Might, two Inquisition of Kozilek, four Leyline of Sanctity, three Fatal Push, and one Boseju who endures. Gotta love the Fatal Pushes and Boseju for more interaction. You definitely need the Pirate Spell Bomb because Sanctifier and Vec is a huge problem. Yeah. Uh, Multani and Yargle is a black creature, so that won't even go to the graveyard to try to reanimate. Um, so you definitely want to an have an answer to that one. Plus, it's a reasonable piece of interaction. The Pithing Needle is the flex card for me. Uh, I kind of like it in the matchup, being able to name things like Ink Moth Nexus, sometimes just naming Colossus Hammer 
to stop pure still paladin yeah. from even ever equipping it uh you know you can name stoneforge mystic sometimes you can name your opponent's urza saga it's yep. got uses and it's a one of they usually grab off saga i like it yeah so i usually like it some people don't uh we'll see if lichens brings it in and for travis brown yeah who's playing hammer this mono white build looks pretty oh, strong what you think interestingly Zero copies of Sanctifier and Vec in the same Okay, board. okay. Not a, really a big fan of that one, I guess, huh? Has four Draneth Magistrate. Well, that one's pretty good against your baby Underworld Breach. Yeah, not so good in this matchup, though. Two Mana Tithe should be pretty good. Two March of Otherworldly Light, two Orvar the All Form, one Pithing Needle, two Solitude, and two Surge of Salvation. N interestingly, those two Solitudes are the third and fourth copies. There's two in the main, uh, which should be very good in the matchup. Notably, and to support them, the mana base has four copies of Amiria's Call. So sometimes your extra land is the white card to pitch to the Solitude, which is very cool. Uh, that should be very good because it cleans up, you know, Yargles if they guard his Vengeance or Emrakul's uh, even before it attacks. It can deal with a Kragenwick. It can you know, sometimes gain you life to survive a Kragenwick hit. So I imagine the Solitudes and Mana Tides come in. Not a big fan of anything else, though. Potentially Surge of Salvation, because Surge stops the it stops a Kragenwick, right? Uh, you're going to have to just read off all of Surge of Salvation. Yeah. In fact, let's get it on the screen if we can. I don't know if we can get it on the scene, but uh, let's go back down to the table. Let's oh, bring up... Uh, only prevents damage salvation. to creatures you control, but it gives you Hexproof. So it does give you Hexproof, and that I think that gives you protection from the Kragenwack because it can yeah. hit a player or a Planeswalker, so that, to me, believe makes me believe that it's targeted. Yes, it does target a player or a Planeswalker. So, yeah, Surge will probably come in to stop Kragenwack as well, and you know they're probably bringing in interaction. Yeah, and Kraken, Kragenwack is one of those weird cards that was made, I think, before Planeswalkers existed, and so, um, you know, it just it's weird, you know, slightly templated weirdly, because it used to only hit players, and then they did the redirect rule for Planeswalkers. Or am yeah, I just wrong? It, it just says Planeswalkers on it. It says Creature or Planeswalker. Well, you're looking at, or like... Player or Planeswalker. Are you looking at the printed version, mm -hmm. or are you looking at the yeah. Oracle printed version for Magic Online or whatever? No, it's Player or Planeswalker. It was printed in Shadow War, which is after Lorwyn. Ah, fine, 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 fine. Okay. Uh, looks like both players here are taking a mulligan. Who do you think uh, wins in a heavy mulligan battle between Mono White Hammer and Reanimator? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> the the Kree animator deck is tough to, to pin down. You could end up with a draw that's more half and half, but the London Mulligan should help that mitigate that issue. Um, both decks are pretty capable of doing powerful things, even from a low card count. So I don't know if this necessarily significantly favors either deck or the other. Okay. I know that uh, Hammer is one of those decks that it can easily win on like a mold of four with just like four or five of the right cards. Yeah. Um, whereas the Cranimator deck needs, you know, usually to hit four lands to be able to play the Kragenwet Cremator. However, you know, the deck is a Gorio's Vengeance deck, and so yeah. really you only need like two or three lands to get that part of the deck going. Two, two, two lands, Cookbook, Gorio's, Emrakul. Yep. All right. Like, even but, if it doesn't kill them, like you're already starting on a mulligan. If I get your first three cards and 15 you, I'm going to have time to figure out a way to kill you. All right, both players here looking at their six-card hands. Looks like Travis Brown very likely to keep. Lycans seems like his hand's okay. I see a couple of red cards in there. Into the Neonate, Pithy Needle. Pithy needle. Well, Lycans agrees with me. He likes it in the matchup. Okay. Maybe he puts it back to find off Saga later. Just maybe doesn't need it. No, it looks like Travis Brown's going to go to five. So Lycans keeping the six. Brown going to five. See if he has a playable five that he's happy with. There's plenty of them. How about uh, two lands, hammer her ginger brute, and cigar aid. Okay, that's pretty good. Eleven on turn two, eleven again on turn three. All right, here comes Travis Brown's five card hand. We'll see if we can get a good look at it. I see uh, Saga, multiple Stoneforge, Hammer, and maybe a Cigar Aid. So it looks like we have a really good five-card hand with a couple of choices on what to put back. Planes, Stoneforge, Saga Planes. That's basically all you need. All right, we're underway. Lycans, turn one, okay. Insulin Neonate, threatening a turn to Oreo's Vengeance. We'll see if he's able to accumulate enough of the different cards to assemble that for next turn. 
Also a Solitude in Brown's Keep. A little awkward to keep that one on a mulligan to five, but sometimes you just need the insurance, right. especially against the power of Emrakul. All right, just the planes. No one drop for Travis Brown. Obviously would like to have a turn one Cigar to Zade or a turn one S for Sentinel, but kept a hand that's heavy on the twos on the mold of five. Dragon Lock Cremators to draw for Lycans. We'll see if he gets to that eventually. Cavern of Souls, my guess, gonna name Giant. I think Kragamite Cremator's Giant. Don't quote me on it. Don't crucify me if I'm wrong. All right, here's an attack for one. Neonate gets in there. Lycans follows that up. Here comes Pithy Needle. We'll get the name from the spotter in just a moment. All right, here we go. Feels a little soon for that. There's so many possible options, you know. Okay, Urza Saga is the play for Travis Brown. Has a two drop in Stoneforge Mystic. Can go ahead and play that if he so chooses. Solitude gives me like a breath of fresh air if I'm Travis Brown. You just don't feel like you're going to lose to any draw from the Creanimator deck if you ask me. Yeah, it's a lot of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I can go, go about my business, set up my own game plan. Solitude has my back. Yeah, here comes Cauldron Complete. Okay. So without any Cigar to Zades or Pure Steel Paladin, it's going to go for the one-card combo, Stoneforge Mystic, into yeah. Surge of Salvation, but a Lightning Bolt going to blow that up. Stoneforge down. We left a card when we moved the deck over. All right, back Lycan's way. I'm going to attack for one. He has a Yargle in hand. I would have loved to have seen him be aggressive here while the shields are down and just, like, discard it now. Dealing one at a time is is not like a great way to win, but he does have the Kragen Wack in hand. Yeah, having the Kragen Wick, that that's that feels like the plan. I almost would have just sacked the Neonate discarding the cookbook. That's what I was actually about to yeah. suggest. All right, Sorry. here comes another Stoneforge Mystic. This is going to potentially be a thorn in Michael Lycan's side. We'll see what he goes and gets. We have Hammer, number one. We have Cauldron Complete in hand. We'll see if the Stoneforge Mystic gets to untap. And we're going to be heading back Michael Lycan's way in just a moment. Yeah, this looks pretty good for Travis Brown at this point. Has the Surge as protection, has the Solitude as protection from an Emrakul, and is going to be able to land this uh, Calder Complete and just ride that. So Mono White Hammer showing some versatility here. Mm -hmm. Not really playing as much with its namesake card, uh, instead just becoming this sort of mid-range Stoneforge Mystic deck. All right, so Michael Likens asking to take a look at the Calder Complete to see... What it does it's got a lot of text a lot of keywords we'll get that one on screen for you so you can read it alongside michael likens if i'm not mistaken it's a five five yeah indestructible uh it has first strike trample indestructible haste and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a creature exile that creature notably that only works if you deal combat damage to it and don't kill it so it's a, a way for you to essentially brick a bigger creature that's trying to like block it forever and just eats it I'm, 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 I'm. Saga, floating mana. What are we going to go get? Uh, we don't really need a hammer. Maybe a ginger brew, maybe a drum. Looks like a pithy needle. Pithy okay. needle's not a bad idea. Pithy needle, your cookbook. Yeah, and that'll keep the Emrakul discard from happening. Yeah, I like that. Me as well. Okay. And we're using the mana to put in the cauldron complete, and we're going to start cranking on them for five. With a solitude as protection, me likey. And we'll get confirmation on that pith and needle from Travis Brown's side, but I am confident it's naming cookbook. There's land three, but now do we just have the two cards in hand? And yeah, there's a uh, card. So there's a Kragan Whack and Emrakul, and whatever okay. was drawn last turn off Yargle, which I think is a another Emrakul. Uh, so a land off the top is potentially lethal, although I think Solitude can maybe gain us some life so we don't we're die. We're going to Surge of Salvation, too. Oh, tight. So that's going to just brick the Kraken Wax ability straight up. And there's the the one grief in Lycan's deck, and that's not going to do anything. And a frustrated uh, and defeated Michael Lycan's packs it in. And Mono White Hammer doing what Mono White Hammer does best, defeating their opponent. Yeah, and uh, doing it impressively a little bit different both games like game one was less interactive more just you know clock you game two was you know I'm, I'm gonna ride my one threat i've got a lot of interaction for you after sideboard uh and it didn't really end up needing it because like and straw didn't quite come together mm -hmm. uh but you know ha really had him covered the entire way there 